Praise the Lord, and welcome to the live streaming, the E-Church Experience. We want to thank you for tuning in to the Greater Bethlehem Temple Apostolic Church's E-Service. Please join our E-Family, our online extended family, by following us on Facebook, Instagram, Periscope, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Please also support our ministry by sowing a financial seed to help us reach people from around the world for Jesus Christ. And now we're going to go into our live service. Praise the Lord, everyone. Again, we'd like to say praise the Lord to everyone tuning in tonight to our live telecast and uh, virtual experience here at the Greater Bethlehem Temple Apostolic Church located at 4781 Hamilton Avenue in the heart of the city, which has the city in its heart. This time we're going to pray. Gracious God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we come to tell you thank you. We come to praise your mighty name. We thank you again for being in the land of the living, seeing a day we never seen. We thank you for the powerful gift of the Holy Ghost, victory over sin in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you your name, praise and honor. We ask you, Lord God, to bless, touch those yet, Lord, suffering in the hospital with all kind of ailments, including the coronavirus. Go by and see about Bishop Ford in the name of Jesus Christ. Watch over his family, his church. My God, in the name of Jesus. No, oh God, we're asking you to save tonight, to deliver, to work a miracle right now. Touch that person that needs help. Oh, in the name of Jesus, bless from the White House to every house. In thy great name we pray, Lord God. Open up the scientists, the doctors, the lab technicians, all those researchers trying to find a cure for this deadly coronavirus. You provide the knowledge. We give you glory ahead of time. Now, Lord, as we dip into thy word, we ask not only the ability to pray and comprehend, but Lord, we want to be doers of your word, not just hearers. Help us, I pray, in the name of Jesus Christ, in your great name. Amen, amen, and amen. Again, we give you glory. We give God praise for his greatness and his mercy. We're entering again into our final installment of the spiritual warfare for this time, and we're going to look at this because we are still under the complete understanding that the enemy is the devil. We know the devil gets in people, he gets in situations, he gets yes. in circumstances. But all the problems we have are because of the evil one, the trickster, the deceiver, the devil, the old Satan, the old serpent, the wicked one from the garden even to this present day. But we have weapons that are not like the weapons made by man, but they're weapons made by God because we're in a spiritual Warfare. Evangelists, if you'll read for us our controlling scriptures in Ephesians 6 and 12 and 6 and 13, please. All right. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh -huh. but against principalities, yes. powers, uh -huh. against the rulers of the darkness yes. of this world, uh -huh. against spiritual wickedness yes. in high places. All Wherefore, right. mm -hmm. take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day yes. and having done all to stand. All right. So we understand we need to take on the arm of God so that we can stand in the evil day. This is an evil day. Yes, Lord. This is an evil day. I said this is an evil yes, day. Yes. Wickedness is everywhere. Man. No place is sacred. No place is safe. Wherever the devil and the sin can enter, it is entering. The primary place we are fighting to keep it out of is in, out of our mind. For my hands and my feet, my mouth, my tongue will do no evil Amen. if it doesn't first enter my mind and control right. my mind. So we have weapons. Because we're in a spiritual fight, we need spiritual weapons. One of the first weapons we talked about was having our lawns girded with truth. And then we talked about having on the breastplate of righteousness. Next, we talked about having our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Then we talked about uh, having the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. We also talked about the helmet of salvation. Then the last few weeks, we've been dealing with the sword of the spirit. Yes. Now tonight, we're dealing with another weapon. Uh, it, is, is, it, is, it is our understanding that Paul talked about weapons 
that he saw the Roman soldiers wear. But I submit to you there's another weapon. We named the six, but there's another weapon, not mentioned by category as one of these, but it is mentioned in this text, and we're going to look at it. And it's a very powerful weapon. Yes. And I submit since all the weapons Paul named, they could be, uh, 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 they could be uh, compared to a natural weapon worn by a soldier. When he talked about a sword, a soldier actually carried a sword. A helmet, he actually wore a helmet. A breastplate, he all actually had a breastplate. When he talked about feet shod with preparation of the gospel of peace, he actually wore sandals. Yes. When he talked about girding his lawns with truth, the soldier actually had on a belt. Mm -hmm. But ah, this weapon, oh, yeah. there was nothing Paul could compare it to, but he spoke about it. And I'm going to talk about that in just a few moments. As we continue our study in Ephesians 6 and sp on spiritual warfare, and although we have already talked about six pieces of spiritual armor, which Paul mentions, we still have one vital important piece, one vital important piece left. Although we looked at last week at, at many, and what many people think is the only offensive weapon in the list, the sword of the spirit, today we come to another weapon which is just as powerful, maybe even more powerful at some times. Evangelist, you'll read for us uh, Ephesians 6, 18. All right. Praying. Praying. Always. Praying always. With all prayer and supplication. With all prayer and supplication. In the spirit. In the spirit. And watching there unto with there unto. all perseverance uh -huh. and supplication for all saints. Now, this weapon I just named, it's not glamorous. It's not shiny. Well. It's not something people just run up and grab. Man. But it is powerful. He said, praying. Yes. Now, all the other weapons, Paul is not ready to put the glue to it. Praying. Praying. Always with all prayer. So, so after you put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith, the, the, the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, lawns, girded and truth, you need another weapon yes. to pull it all together. And this is what Paul, I think, is saying in verse 18. We're going to examine this verse. We're going to do an exegesis on the entire verse and point out probably five points from that verse alone. So it's the, uh, it's the praying. I want to talk about prayer tonight. Prayer, I want to say, is a secret weapon. Yes. Ah, it wasn't listed in the original six. I think it's a secret weapon. It's a weapon the devil has no defense against. There's no denying that we are engaged in a spiritual battles every day, and as saints and Christians, we are often feel the effects of the enemy attacks. We feel it. If it ain't one thing, it's another. Yes. Sometimes you get out of bed and you and your spouse in an argument, your children acting up, your job acting up. Sometimes you got trouble going on in your own mind. Always an attack from somewhere. The Bible said man born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Yes. Each time we take a step forward, we're met with resistance in the form of sometimes doubt, sometimes fear, sometimes persecution, or any number of other strategies Satan uses against us. And I'm talking about when you take steps of faith and righteousness and holiness. Anytime you attempt to do something right, you can, you can rest assured you're going to have opposition. But I got news for you. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. But it says, but the Lord shall deliver them out of them all. Yes. However, God will never leave us and will not be fighting this battle alone. That's good news. I'm in a fight. But God's never going to leave me. Amen. And let me tell you something. Jesus fought the devil from the time he was conceived to the grave. Let me help you out. We have been fighting this devil since the time we were conceived to the time we're called out of here, this world. He will never stop. But God has promised never to leave us or forsake us. We're in a battle with these spiritual weapons, and we got the Lord God Almighty on our side. God has armed us with a number of spiritual weapons, and prayer is one of the most powerful tools at our disposal in our arsenal. Prayer. We underestimate prayer. One of the reasons, I'm going to tell you something. Do you not know it is 
very easy to pick up a, 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 a shield. It's easy to pick up a sword, easy to put on a helmet, easy to put on a breastplate, easy to put on uh, 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 shoes, easy to put on a belt. But when it comes down to prayer, it takes emotional perseverance. Yes. You got to fight uh, irritation. You got to fight crazy thoughts. You got you to come against your own body. Sometimes, do you know you can sit and watch a TV program for two hours, but oh. you go down in prayer for five minutes and you get sleepy? Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. You can go shopping all day long at the mall, but when it comes to prayer, 15 minutes and your knees start hurting. <laughs> it takes something on the inside of us to overcome us, our own soul spirit to persevere and push forward in prayer. Why prayer, you ask, all right? Let's go to James 5, 16. Do we have that? Uh -huh. Confess your faults, Confess one, your to faults another, one to another uh -huh. and pray. And pray. For one another. Pray for one another. That he may be healed. May be healed. Now, this is what I want right here. The effectual, the effectual fervent, fervent prayer of a righteous man of a righteous availeth man. much. Now, you got to get this. It's not just prayer. You've got to be righteous. Yes. It's got to be effective. And it's got to be fervent. Yes. Prayer of the righteous man. Now the key words there availeth much. When you when you are right, when you get ready to pray, you're right while you're praying. The prayer is effective if it is fervent. Prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The term fervent prayer comes from the James James five uh, sixteen in the King James version. The English word fervent means simply. Uh, impassioned, yes, heated. forceful, yes, passionate, mm -hmm. heartfelt, powerful, yes. or wholehearted. Again, it means impassionate. You involve, forceful. You 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 engage, passionate. You feel it, yes. heartfelt. It touches your soul. Glory. It's powerful. It has an effect, and it's wholehearted. You when you are praying with the affirmative effectual prayer, you hold back nothing. I hear the song where I say, holding back nothing. When you are praying in, in the right, effective, firm prayer, you are withholding nothing from God. You you exposing your whole self. Our prayers connect us with God, strengthen us for the fight, and keep us grounded. Yes. Prayer is what keeps us from getting the big head. Oh, my God. Prayer keeps us from getting lifted up. Because, see, the whole posture of prayer is one of humility. Yes. Prayer means you're talking to something greater than you to assist you. Mm -hmm. So the whole attitude, when it's correct, is one of humility. That's why it keeps you grounded. You understand, the, the, the Bible says, had it not been for the Lord who was on our side, prayer keeps you in that attitude that I'm only what I am by the grace of God. Lord. Paul put it on this wise. He said, the life that I now live, I'm talking to all you church folk, you folk full of the Holy Ghost, living holy and about to get lifted up because you don't smoke and don't drink no more and don't carouse no more. You ain't cuss nobody out lately. I'm going to help you out. Paul said, the life that I now live, not I. Uh-oh, quit patting yourself on the back. Not I, but Christ that liveth in me. So if there's any holiness, any righteousness, any cleanness in us, it's because of Jesus. You can't claim one iota of righteousness. Amen. Matter of fact, it was imputed to us. Yes. Because all of our righteousness was a filthy rags. rags. Yes. The whole nation is a drop in the bucket. Yes. In other words, when we did our best, we still fell short. Because the Bible said, all have sinned, watch yourself, come and short. come short. Yes. That means everybody fell short. Nobody was worthy. Glory. That's why Jesus it had to come, God in the form of Jesus Christ had to come to save us. Because as well as we might have intended, and I'm going to help you out, there were times probably all of us experienced in life that I'm not going to do it no more, uh, I, it was wrong, uh, I, I'm sorry, and I, I'm just not going to do it. Oh, I know you said that. And without the power to stop and control yourself, you found yourself doing it even more. Glory. Some of y'all said, I ain't drinking no more. Got too drunk last time and messed around and got drunker than you ever got. Because without the Holy Ghost, without power, we cannot control ourselves. Amen. 
So prayer always helps us and reminds us that God is the one that keeps us. Oh, yes. Prayer helps us say, Lord, keep on helping me. Lord, keep on strengthening me. Lord, keep on giving me the power to live holy. God, don't let me fall. God, don't let me slip up. God, don't let me mess up. God, keep my feet grounded. Prayer is the only dialogue. It opens a dialogue between us and God. Prayer gives us a chance to talk to God and a yes. chance for God to talk to us. Now, I love to shout with the best of them, love to dance and have church, as we call it. But that ain't when I'm talking to God. I'm just rejoicing. But prayer takes away all of the pretense. It gets me to a, 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 a frame of mind and a frame of reference that, I can, that God and I can have a conversation. Now, and this is amazing because, uh, you know, God says his thoughts are above our thoughts, and, 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 and as far as the heaven is above the earth. So how do I hold a conversation with God? Well, let me help you out. The Bible, and we're going to deal with the scripture in a few minutes, but God has to take control of my mindset so that I'll know how to talk to him. I'm going to deal with that in a few minutes. Look at Jeremiah 33 and 3, Evangelist. What does it say? All right, call unto me. Call, you got to call him. And Song I said, call him up. Go ahead. Yes. And I will answer thee. Now, notice the, notice the, if, the, if we call, God's going to answer. Yes. Somebody saying, well, he ain't never answered me. Have you ever called him? And he has a prerequisite. It's not just a verbal audio call. There is some uh, qualifications you have to meet so the call will be accepted. In other words, if you're, if you're on the internet, uh, you're, 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 so you're trying to contact somebody, and you don't have internet access, you can't reach them. If you don't have the right access to heaven, you can't reach God. Woo, Lord Glory. have mercy. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and show thee great and mighty things. Now, and when you can reach him, he's going to show not. you great and mighty mm -hmm. things that we don't have any idea what yes. they're about. When we, because remember, God is in heaven. We here on the earth. He knows things we haven't yet even thought about, let alone seen. Yes. And he said, if we call, I'll answer and, he, and he said he will answer, and, and he he'll show me. us great and mighty things. Uh -huh. Now, the great and mighty things, really, I'm going to help you out. We sometime in the flesh, we think great and mighty mean a new car, new house, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. that maybe, that's, on the, that's on the very carnal level. Yeah. Let's take it to a spiritual level. The great and mighty things is that he shows you that you can live holy. Yeah. He shows you you can live above sin. He shows you that if you take his hand and let him lead you, he'll lead you out of the temptation and the trouble that's messing with your soul. Lord. That's, you know, that's great and mighty. Uh, I got to help you out. Yes, Lord. We, we think great and mighty is, is because my name is being called, because I have a position. And, you know, there's a certain uh, 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 levity to that. But I'm talking about this. The Bible says greater is the man that can control his spirit than he that taketh the city. The man that can control whether or not he cuts somebody out is greater than the man that can take a city but he cuts everybody out. Lord help. Greater is the individual who refused to commit adultery and fornication than the individual who has a big name but land with everybody. My Lord. Greater is the individual who has the ability to love people regardless and in spite of that agape love, that God love, than he that can control the world and hate everybody. Greater. See, we had to look at greater from God's perspective. God looks at greater from this control. He that can live holy. He that can at the end of the day say, the prince of this world cometh. That's what Jesus said. The we prince of this nothing. world cometh and have nothing in me. Mm -hmm. All right, so call him and he'll answer. All right, let's go a little further. Because of what Jesus did, prayer has evolved from the Old Testament to the New. We no longer have to beg and plead for God to do something for us. See, in the Old Testament, remember when the story with, with Mount Carmel and Elijah, and they was begging, they used to call God, oh, Baal, oh, they, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was customary in that day. You beg a God, you beg a deity, come help you. But Jesus changed all that. He already done everything they need to do to defeat the enemy. When Jesus defeated the enemy, uh, on Calvary and rose on the third day, the Bible say now we can come boldly oh, to the yeah. throne. Boldly. This gives us power. Uh, we're praying. Now, notice this. We're praying from victory, not for victory. 
let me slow that down. We are praying from a point of victory, yes. not for victory. Not for In other words, we already got the victory. We're praying from a position of strength. Yes. We're not praying from a position to get strong. We're already strong. Oh, good God Almighty. Let the weak say they're strong. That's what the Bible says. Yes. Look at Luke 10, 17, 19, evangelist. Uh -huh. And the 70. Now watch this. The 70 is sent out. Game with joy. Now, let me help you out. The 70 they sent out. I, I want y'all to understand something. There are no overnight wonders. Mm, let me slow it down because I know some of y'all are knowing it and uh, you're gifted and you got this talent and never been nobody like you. And when God made you, he broke them all. I understand all that. But there are no overnight wonders. Man. Jesus waited 30 years before he started his ministry. And, and he trained the 70. Even the disciples were with him three and a half years. They had to get training before they went out. Amen. So let me help all you out that's got an, got an itch and uh, you got to go. I got, I got, to, I got to work. I got, you need some training. You need someone to educate you on how to walk with God. Yes. Jesus sent the 70 out after he trained them. Uh -huh. Go ahead, evangelist. And they return, return again with joy. They returned happy. Go ahead. Saying, Lord, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Now hold it. Let me. I, I uh, love the way they put the words because we mess it up. They <laughs> said, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through your name. We that came back and said, Lord, even the devils are subject to my name. <laughs> it's not us. He said, thy name. That's what they said. Yeah. In other words, all this is happening is because of you. Ooh, God is looking for somebody still giving him praise. Somebody still giving him glory. I, now, I, I will not uh, take away from the fact that you've been to college. You have a degree. You matriculated one of the greatest schools. You're very intelligent. You work on a job. You go to work every day. You do a good job. I, I, I'm taking none away from your level of intelligence, you, your ability to do what you do, you, your talent, your gifted. I believe all that. But the bottom line, Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. Yes. Whatever gift you have, whatever talent you have, whatever ability you have, it comes from God. And what prayer will help you do is keep on telling him thank you. Yes. See, that's what prayer will do. Let me help you out. I heard a, a person say that I think it's a good idea. We're in a very busy uh, technological age. Nobody has time for anything. We can press buttons and do everything now. And, every, and sometimes you jump out of bed running. This will help you. I, I want to pray. I know, I know I should pray, but I'm so busy. Put your shoes way underneath your bed. Oh, glory. So you have to get on your knees to get them out. <laughs> and since you're on your knees, then cry out to God. My God. <laughs> All right. So, so they, the subject in our name, go to verse uh -huh. 18, please. And he said unto them, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lighting fall from heaven. Now, now watch this. This shows you the superiority of Jesus Christ. We humans, mere humans get excited because the devil backs up in Jesus' name. Jesus said, that ain't nothing. I saw him get kicked out of heaven. <laughs> I was there when they drop kicked him. Yes. I was there when the mic was dropped on him. He said, I've been healing and falling. And look, he didn't fall gracefully. He said, as lightning. As lightning. That means that was a flash. He got a, that, That's Wait. another word to help us out. Yeah. Prayer will keep us from falling. Man. The devil, we don't know how long he was in heaven. But he fell like lightning. He fell quick. Oh, yeah. If you get out of the will of God, you don't develop a strong prayer life, you're going to fall quick. Glory to God. Prayer will keep you from falling quick. My God. He fell quick. All right, go ahead. Verse 19. Behold, Behold, I give unto you power. Now, Jesus is saying, I, get this right, strong, powerful, anointed, gifted, devil scatter you, demons run from you. Let me help you out. Jesus said, I give you power. Uh-huh, to tread on serpents, tread on serpents and, and scorpions. scorpions. Let me say this. Holy dependence. Mm -hmm. Anytime some, all right, anytime somebody give you something, My Lord. they have the ability to take it away. Oh, yeah. Because they gave it to you. God is so powerful, he gives us power yes. to tread over serpents and scorpions. Go ahead, Amanda. And over all the power of the enemy. And all the power of the enemy. And nothing and shall nothing by, any by any means hurt you. Hurt you. When you got a good prayer life, you got power. 
to walk on serpents and scorpions. Yes. When you got a good prayer life, you got power over the enemy. Not, not the enemy, got, you got power over the enemy. Yes. Now notice the power I'm talking about, not the power to hit him with a left hook or a straight right cross. Yeah. No, the power is to resist him. Yeah. It'll take prayer to help you control your spirit to say no to that thing that's tempting you. Oh, glory. All right, she'll by no means hurt you. All right, let's go a little further. Let me go a little further. Mm -hmm. Secret weapon. We're talking about the secret weapon of prayer. Even as a victorious believer, there are times when our spirits get heavy. We feel a need to pray. But sometimes, even when you know you want to pray, you know you need to pray. The words just don't seem to come right. You can't seem to formulate what you feel into yeah, words. Yeah. The, the symbol called words that we use expression, we just can't seem to get it right. Words aren't necessarily in the spirit realm. The words are in the natural realm, yes. the celestial realm, the telephone. But in the celestial realm, there are, there are other things that's not words because the spirit frees us from the restrictions of the human intellect yes. and understanding. In other words, there are places that you can get to, but there's no way you can utter a word to express what you're feeling. Amen. Look at Romans 8, 26, amen. Uh -huh. Likewise, Likewise, the Spirit also, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Hold it right there. We got some shortcomings. Uh-oh. Yes. Uh-oh. That, that don't mean you sinning. Now, let me clear it up. That don't mean you sinning. But we are limited. Yes. Let me help you out. We get tired. We get sleepy. We get weary. We forget things. Yes. We're getting older. <laughs> we have infirmities. We get sick. We have infirmities. Yes. We get upset. We get confused. We misplace stuff. We have infirmities. Oh, glory. Sometimes we can't remember words we learned over times past. Sometimes we can't articulate and, and, and actually and properly enunciate a word. We have infirmities. Oh, yes. <laughs> but in spite of the infirmities, read that advantage, but the what? For we know not what we should pray for. Uh, but the spirit, mm -hmm. okay, go ahead. Also help. Now, uh, read that. But the spirit back. itself. Helpeth our infirmities. Make so it now, an intercession for us. Uh -huh, for we know not what we should Hold pray on. for. I'm looking, at, I'm, look, I'm looking at verse All 26. Right. But the spirit, but the spirit uh -huh, itself, itself. Make it intercession now, for us. The spirit us. intercedes. It, it collides with my shortcoming. Yes. It carries the, the baton the rest of the way to the throne for me. Maybe all I can get out is, ah, and the spirit picks it up. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you can be in so much distress, your mind can be so perplexed, you can be so overcome with the cares of this life that you can't do nothing but moan and holler. Yes, Lord. But the spirit picks oh, those up, uh -huh. and it interprets them. Oh, good God yes, Almighty. Yes, Lord. It, it, it conveys what you can't utter. Yes. Session for us with groanings. Ain't that what it says? It mentions with, with groanings, groanings. Which cannot be uttered. There's something sometime in real prayer my that Lord. is so deep in your soul that all you can do is moan. Oh. And yes, anyone Lord. listening will not be able to grasp what Woo. you're saying. Glory but the Spirit God. picks it up. Yes, Lord. The Spirit of God picks it up. Yes, Lord. Because spirits talk to spirit. Oh, God, I oh, feel an anointing right there. What your flesh can't speak. What the carnal man can't honor. Ma, 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 ma. The Spirit picks it up in the, in the atmosphere. Yes. Hallelujah. And God is able to understand what you're trying to say. Hallelujah. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. Look at verse 27. Yeah, and he that searches the now, heart. Now, God searches my heart. God, look at somebody say, I know I don't always make sense. Yes, Lord. I know I don't always explain it the way I feel it. And I know my prayers to you seem crazy, but the Spirit searched my mind. Yeah, and knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. He knows the mind of my spirit. Because he make it intercession. And he make it intercession saints, for the saints. According to the will of God. It's, it's God's know. will yeah. that the Spirit helps me. It's God's will. He knows I'm weak. Oh, he knows I want to do right. But I'm tested and I'm tried. So when I go in prayer and utter and I can't express it or articulate it, the Spirit picks it up because the Spirit knows His will for me. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, good God am I. Jeremiah said, Lord, I know the thoughts I think of you, not of evil, but of good and to bring you to expect it. God knows God that, knows. that I want to go to heaven. God knows I want to do right. Hallelujah. So when I go in prayer, 
And I'm trying to say, Lord, and it doesn't come out right. He picks up the phonetic. Yes. Woo! I may not conjugate my, my verbs in the right place. My, I may split some infinitives and use double negatives. Yes. But the spirit, the spirit goes through all of that. And it understands what I'm trying to say. When tears are coming down, I can't get the word out my mouth. I'm hurting so bad. The spirit. The spirit. My God, my God. Hey, Lord, have Thank mercy. You, Jesus. According to his will, verse 28. Uh -huh, now, we and, know. And, and this is what, the, and we know. Now, now, see, once you understand and you're in prayer right, mm -hmm. and you're in God's will, and the spirit's making this session, then you can say this. And, and we, know we know that all things work, all together, things work for good. together for the good. To it's get... working for my good. Yes. It's working for my good. I want y'all to get that. It's working for my good. Yes. Notice he didn't say it looked like it. He didn't say you would understand it. Glory. He didn't say you would have a way to interpret it. He said you got to know it. That means by faith. I know all things are working together yeah, for, for the good. To them that love God. Because I love God. Now here's the proof. Uh -huh. To and to them are called the according, call, to, according his to his purpose. And to love God means you obey God. Yes. And if you obey God, you're working according to his purpose. Glory, thank glory, you, man. Just thank glory, you. Oh, glory. that was so powerful. Hallelujah. Let me go a little further now. Oh, hallelujah. Mm, Let me go a little further. We've done that. Let's I touched on that. Let's go a little further. All right. Yeah. We want to look at this verse 18 again, 618, mm -hmm. and, 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 and break it down for you. We're going to do a little extra Jesus on the text itself. The perpetual Fervent prayer. Uh, the first one is the uh, perpetual prayer. Ephesians 16, uh, 6, uh, 18a. I'll call it part A. And this deals with, uh, and then we'll deal with the uh, petitionary prayer. Part B, the powerful prayer. Part C, the perseverant prayer. Part D, and the purposeful prayer. Part E. Now let's go with number one, the perpetual prayer. Evangelist, if you'll get for us, um, uh, read, read just, uh, the, go back to 618 and read for me. I just want you to read the first two words on the first sheet, on page number one, 618. The first two words. Praying always. Oh, hold it right there. Praying always. We get this from the first two words of the verse where it says praying always. We should be praying always, remind us of what Paul said, if I just get for me, in, in, in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Now, it does not mean you go around on your knees all the time. Every time we see you uttering a prayer, that's not what it means. Mm -hmm. See, the Bible talks of being, doing everything decent and in order. How are you going to be on your job working when they paying you to work uh -huh. and you down on your knees? They didn't pay you to pray. Without There's a time and a season for everything. Yes. Now, there, this, this deals what we're going to deal with. It. Look, at, look at 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, evangelist. They pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Uh -huh. That's what he's saying. Pray without ceasing. In other words, there, this deals with an attitude, attitude. of prayer. Yes. Having a prayerful mind. Let's look, let's look at Philippians 4, 16. For, uh, Philippians 4 and 6. Because Paul said something. Uh -huh. We're in a time when people are nervous, they're all anxious, they're all afraid. Yes. Look what Paul said. Be careful for nothing. Look, don't take nothing for granted. Be careful, don't be all afraid, don't be all nervous. Go ahead. But in everything. Now, here it is. Paul said, don't be nervous, don't be afraid, don't be scared. But he's saying, but in everything. My prayer. You, you got to get that in your spirit. Uh -huh. In everything. By prayer and supplication. Did you get that? In everything, yes. Bill, do in everything. Trouble in your house, in everything. everything. Trouble on the job, in everything. everything. Corona, in everything. everything. Racism, in everything. everything. President, everything. Uh huh. By, by prayer, prayer and, and supplication. supplication. By prayer and supplication. Uh -huh. With what? With thanksgiving. Oh my God! Ooh. Look at here. When your prayer life is right, with yes. supplication, you automatically thank God. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says in all things give thanks. It never said for all things. It said in all things. Yes. In other words, why I'm going through what I'm going through, I'm going to tell God thank you. Oh, I ain't thanking God that I'm sick, but I'm thanking God I still got a mind to serve him in my sickness. 
Hallelujah. I ain't thanking God because my child's in trouble, but I'm going to thank God I still got a mind to serve him though my child's in trouble. Yes. I'm not thanking God for a hard way to go, but doing the hard way, I'm going to tell God, thank you. Yes, Lord. He said in all things, yes. careful for nothing, in everything, by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your what? Let your requests be made known now, unto God. Did y'all catch that? You catch the order. Catch the order. First of all, don't be nervous. Let don't me calm you down. Take a chill pill called the Holy Ghost right now. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> You're too nervous, America. Calm down. Yes. Then everything you're looking at, start praying. By praying so start making supplication. Yes. And then start thanking God. Uh -huh. and, and let your request. Pray, then he said, know. after you and told me thank you, mm -hmm. now make your request. <laughs> we got it backwards. We begging before we tell him thank you. Ooh, He's saying before you make your request, tell me thank you. Because what he's really trying to get us to see, it could be worse than it is. Oh, yes. You know, some folks say, I'm so tired. I don't like getting old. Well, I don't think you like the alternative too well. <laughs> so, so you have to understand that there are people on this planet, people probably in your community, that are worse off than you. Oh, yeah. So you need to tell God, thank you for whatever you're going through because it could be worse. Yes, Lord. All right? Look at Colossians 4 and, and, and 2. Here it is again. To back it up. Continue in prayer. Continue. Keep on praying. The song says, keep on praying. Yes. Keep on praying. And watch and, and listen. in the same. And keep your mind's eye open. Uh -huh. That's what it means. Be observant. Because your enemy, the devil, is as a roaring lion, seeking we might deceive and destroy. Mm -hmm. Don't be in prayer so much, you don't see the game when it's coming. Yes. Oh, everybody ain't played the fool before. Oh, that's what the old song say, everybody. Anybody can be tricked. And the worst thing in the world, ain't no fool like an old fool. <laughs> You'll never get to the point on this planet where you can't be fooled. My Lord. That's why you need God's guiding help through prayer every single day because yes. the trick is out there yes Lord. the devil has learned how to trick slick folk like you before i know ain't nobody never got me i always let him get over you already tricked he got you deceived that you can't be deceived see anytime you deceive that you can't be deceived you already deceived yes all right so it says continue watch in prayer and, and watch in pra and watching the same with thanksgiving there it is again you're praying you continue in prayer but he wants some thanksgiving Oh, that men would magnify the Lord. We ought to always give God glory. We ought to all, when you, and I understand, prayer is a time you, sometimes we go in prayer because we're in a desperate situation. And I'm going to tell you, I believe that's sometimes why God lets happen what happened. You know, conversation, conversation. Let me talk if I can talk for a minute. You know, it's amazing, conversation. Generally, when young folk are courting and two people before they get married, they're just talking all the time. Conversation, they deep in the conversation. They get married, they stop talking. They ain't got no time. I'm busy. I got to make this happen. Maybe Sometimes a situation will arise in the marriage, you end up talking. Uh, mm -hmm. We better talk this out. Oh, I didn't know you felt that way. Well, if you listened five years ago, you knew. Mm -hmm. Same thing with God. We, God wants conversation. The Bible said he came to Adam in the cool of the day. Now, not because he needed Adam. Adam needed God. Oh, glory. God doesn't need us. God doesn't need our prayers. We need our prayers. Yes. So that we can talk to God and then God can communicate back to us. It's communication. Uh -huh. And he wants us to have this continued prayer and give thanks. thanks That's important. Uh -huh. All right. Let me go a little further. Let me move on to the next slide. Let me see which one I want. Let's go to the uh, petitionary prayer. Mm -hmm. This is where you make petitions. Yes. We get this from what, we, uh, what, what he says in, in verse 18, and that's uh, dealing with uh, the part. Read, read, read a little further in that verse 18 again, Evans. 18. Mm hmm 618. Prayer and the next, the next, it says, praying always with, you'll always be going back to this the rest of the night. You'll be going to page one at the bottom. Page one at the bottom. Praying, always, all right. Uh -huh. Praying always. We did praying always. Now we're picking up what? With all prayer. 
and, and supplication. Hold it right there. With all prayer and supplication. Now, we're there at that point. We're at point B on this, in this particular text. The first term prayer refers to general requests, whereas the second term supplication, uh, some of us maybe have petitions or requests, is a word for a specific need. Yes. Praying for, you know, the first word prayer is referring to general requests. You're having a general conversation. But when you go into supplication, you got a specific need. I'm putting in terms you understand. You, you own your job and you get a pink slip. Now, you've been praying all day long, thank God for your job. You get a pink slip, it becomes a more specific need. Now, Lord, I need a job. Before, you're thanking him for the job, but now you've got to pray specifically for the job. So it has to do with specific needs, okay? Look at John 5 and 7, uh -huh. 15 and 7, rather. If you abide in me. Now, now, now you've got to understand this. You've got to understand this. We all want something from Jesus. And like I said, you get a scratch on your hand, you never pray. Put on a Band-Aid, put some oh. iodine on it, move on about your business. But the doctor, all he got to hear, he got to say cancer. All he got to say is, I see a spot. And you immediately, oh, I want the church to go on a fast and prayer for me. And in this age we live now, if they say you got a fever, we don't even think about the cold. We think about uh, corona. Oh, fever. Oh, watch out, corona. And these things cause us to go into an urgency for prayer. But mm -hmm. there is a prerequisite to get help from God. Something has to happen first. Lord, Read it, Evangelist. If you abide in me. Now, you got to abide. Abide means you got yeah. to do like he said. Oh, God, help. Be not just hearers of the word, but do us. Yes. So when I pray, he looks at my life and say, now, how have you been lining up with me? Abide in me and my what? My words abide and my in what? you. In other words, what I've been telling you to do, you've been doing. See, our life is a reflection of how much in his will we are. Then he says what? If, if, now, if he abides in me uh -huh, you shall and, ask. and his words abide in me, you then I have a right to ask what you will. whatever I want. And it shall be done unto him. And you. it shall be done unto him. Now, the Bible said God will give us the desires of our heart that's pertaining to his will. Because what happens when I'm in his will, I don't ask anything outside of his will. Glory. Some are still wondering, why I ain't got that, that new car with them 24s on it? I've been praying every day. That may not be in his will. Why I ain't got that job? Why I ain't got that house? Why I ain't got that individual? Some folk praying on folk. Got 20 women praying on one man. He can't marry but one of y'all. Glory. Oh, you know, I'm the one. You, you may not be the one. The Bible said, he that finds the wife, go lose yourself and let somebody find you. I'll leave it alone, okay? <laughs> but abide in me and my words abide in you. You can ask what you will and it you shall be shall. done. But mm -hmm. the, you have to meet the qualifications. In your prayer, you have to be abiding in him. Yes. And his words have to be abiding in you. Yes. That's why the devil couldn't handle Jesus. We said that on last week. Because when the devil came to Jesus, Jesus was in the word. Man. And there was no defense against the word. When you're in prayer, there's no defense against your life if your life lines up with the word of God. Glory to All God. All right, let's, let's go to uh, Matthew 7, 7 and 8. All right. Ask, and it, it shall be Ask given. Ask, and it you. shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Now, this is dealing with a situation where you're in the will of God because you're asking seeking. what's in the will of God, uh -huh. and you're seeking what's in the will of God, uh -huh. and you're knocking. Knock, Go ahead. And it shall be opened unto this you. This is all conditioned and based upon your, your prayer life is in the will of God. He said, Ask. And you shall be given, seek, and you shall find, knock, knock and it shall be opened. Look at verse 8. And everyone that asketh, receive it. Everyone that's in his will that asks, receive it. Now, here's the amazing thing. You ask God for power, and he makes you weak, so you appreciate his power. So you really got what you asked for. Oh, glory. <laughs> we, we misinterpret the application. Remember, it's not about us. It's about Jesus. You've got to ask according to his will. And you shall receive, and he that what? Uh -huh. Seek he it. He that seeketh, findeth. In his will. I, the reason you can't find what you're looking for, you're not in his will. Because everything that's in his will for you, you're going to get. Everything that he has designed 
from, 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 the from the beginning of eternity concerning you, it's going to come to pass. But you've got to seek it. Go ahead. Uh -huh. And to him that knocketh, and him that knocketh it shall be open. There are certain doors that you can knock on till you die. They're never going to open. But there are certain doors that I didn't say you had to keep knocking, 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 banging on the door. No, all you got to do is knock. And what your prayer life has prepared you for you will open the door. Because oh, yes. you'll be asking in his will. Yes. And let me help you out. Remember this. Jesus, this is the we have to get the, the victory over our pride. Many of the things that I'm asking for, I'm seeking for, I'm knocking for is about me. The door is about somebody else. The Bible said, by this all men shall know you are my disciples. When you have love, love, and love is expressed when it's given away. For the Bible said, God so loved the world that he gave. Yes. So the asking, the seeking, and the knocking is based on what I can do for God, not what I can do for myself. Who help me, Lord. Lord? All right, look at verse, uh, let's see. Let's go a little further. Let's go to... Uh, let me see what the next, let me hold on just a minute. Did I get eight? Yep. Yeah. Look, now, uh, we looked at eight in the same chapter Jesus is dealing with uh, how to be in his will and to acquire heaven. Now, hold your hand up. I know everybody out there want to go to heaven. Oh, everybody. From the present on down, everybody want to go to heaven. Everybody, yes. I, I never see people hold their hand up and say, I want to go to hell. Now, some folks say, I don't believe no Bible, I don't believe no God, but I don't see you say you want to go to hell either. Everybody wants to go to heaven. There is a way. There is a prerequisite. Look what Jesus said in verse 13. Uh -huh. Enter ye Enter. in at the straight gate. Straight gate. Wide is the gate. Enter at the, straight. let me touch on that just for a moment. Right. Enter at the straight gate, not uh -huh. the crooked gate. Not the wrong way. Straight meaning the right way. Right. Enter at the right place. Uh -huh. Enter at the right time. The day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. God is talking to somebody right now. Enter in at the straight gate. Uh -huh. Go ahead, so wide is the gate. Wide is the gate or the way. And broad is the way. And broad is the way. That lead it to destruction. That lead it to destruction. At, listen, mm -hmm. listen, there's a whole lot of people on the broad way. Yes. It's crowded, all kind of folk. You know, Paul talked about not many rich, not many famous, not many great. Going to be in the narrow way. Oh, the, yes. the broad way brings out all kind of people. Famous people, singers, dancers, entertainers, politicians, scientists, doctors, lawyers, the high, the fluting, and it brings out all the other people from on down. They're full of that way because the broad way is where you can do your thing. There are no restrictions, no controls. Just do what you want to do, whatever you can get away with. But not the straight and the narrow. It is restrictive. It's a holy way. It's a way that requires you to lay down flesh. And pick up the Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead, Evangelist. Uh -huh. uh, and many there be. Many there be. In there at. Mm -hmm. Be there at. Many going to get into the many, broad way. Many. Go ahead. Because straight is but the gate. But straight is the gate. And narrow is and the narrow way. And narrow is the way. Which leadeth unto that lead life. life. Uh -huh. And few and there, few be, there be that find it. So, so, so when I pray, I'm praying for a straight gate that's narrow in its way. And it leads to life, but I'm understanding there's only a few folk going to make it. Because most people don't want holiness. No. And the Bible says, holiness without which no man shall see the oh, Lord. Holiness oh, is the way. Holiness. holiness exalts the nation. Yeah, sin is a reproach. reproach. Yeah, to any you want to know why America is such a mess? Too much sin. Yes, Lord. Sinning in every house, in every city, in every state. In every town, in every village, there ought to be a moratorium on sin. Come out from among them, the Bible says. Be ye separate, thus saith the Lord. And you got to pray because your flesh, my flesh, all flesh wants to sin. Yes. And therefore, I need a prayer life so that I can keep my flesh out of sin. Yes. Listen, don't worry about your brother's flesh. Don't worry about your sister's flesh. Your flesh is a 24-7 job. Oh, yes. To keep your mind out of foolishness, to keep your mind out of lusting, to keep your mind out of evil, it takes 24 hours. My Lord. It takes prayer and a whole lot of it. 
Because after you get up off your knees, you got to follow what you prayed about. Oh, glory. The fight is not only on your knees, the fight is when you get up. Hallelujah. And then carry out what God spoke to you in prayer. Hey, glory. That's glory. a fight. That's a fight. I know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let's go a little further. Powerful prayer, yes. The powerful prayer. Ephesians 18 and eight, uh, 618. This is part uh -huh, C. Uh -huh. Read, read for me. Uh, uh -huh. And be not drunk. Uh -huh. No, 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 no. Uh, go back. Still, we're still looking at We're still looking at it. We had to jump back. Well, that's all right. I'll do it here. Okay. When we pray and whenever it is that we pray for, the true effectiveness the true answers to your prayer come from this part of verse 18. Praying in the Spirit. Yes. Praying in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Praying in the Spirit, not in the flesh. Yes. Let me help you out on an elementary level. Many times praying in the flesh is a prayer to be heard. Mm -hmm. Prayer to be seen. Jesus talked about the, the public and the sinner. The public stood, stood up and and, and, and bragged about how holy he was and how righteous he was and all the things he's doing right. And he wasn't like that little poor sinner over there. But the, but the, but the sinner smote his breast and said, I'm not worthy to, to be even be in there. Yeah, so, so you must understand that when you pray in the spirit, you're not trying to impress others. Man. You, you don't have to worry about trying to fix your word. I know I'm walking down somebody's street now. I'm stepping all on toes. When they ask you to lead a prayer, you, ain't try to, you don't have to try to find words to make you sound deep. <laughs> oh, man, did you hear that prayer? That was so anointed. But did God hear it? My Lord. See, because if God doesn't hear the prayer, then it's nothing but a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Man. So I need, now, now you want to pray the right words, but you want to pray the words that are in the spirit. All right, we're going to look at that. Praying in the Spirit. What does that mean? For some groups interpret this to mean praying in tongues. Oh, I touched on some toes again. We think praying in the Spirit is praying in tongues. Let me help you out. Whenever you use tongues, they are unto God. Mm -hmm. So if you're at home alone and you're praying and you go into tongues, that's all right. That's you and God. But when you're in over the the group and you're praying, no need to doing a whole lot of tongues. Nobody understands what you're praying. Oh, I got I lost my card. Somebody throwing me out to the club now. <laughs> but you can't, everything must be done decent and in order. When you pray in tongues, unless there's an interpreter, Paul talking about, you don't need a whole lot of tongues. You need an interpreter, someone to explain the tongues. Because other than that, you're praying to God. So I would I would suggest do pray in tongues. I, 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 it's wonderful. Nothing wrong with it. But do it where it's not in front of people who don't know what you're praying. Sometimes you may have a sinner there. They've been looking for a reason to call us crazy. They hear you in tongues. Look at that. I told you it was all nuts. But if you pray in the spirit, they can hear you. And you, you, may, you may say in an in a audible English language, Lord, save this house. The sinner understands that. But if you go in tongues, they don't know what you're saying. So keep the praying in tongues where it's just you and God. Then pray in tongues all you want to because God understands what you're saying. All right, go ahead and swallow. All right, that's wrong. <laughs> and first of all, that's a distinct context, but in a closer context, right at the end of verse 17, right at the end of verse 17, which we look at in, the la in last week's lesson, we saw that the reference was the sword, which was the word of God. There is something about the word of God. It's alive, it's active, it's Jesus incarnate, it's God, the word of God. Now, I want y'all to think about that. So if you are going to pray in the spirit, that means that to some degree, your prayers are going to be based on the word of God. No need of going way out in left field. Stay in God's word. Don't try to pray to get God to do things he will not do. Help me. Glory to God. Listen, at 70 years of age, ain't no need me praying, God make me seven feet. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> I, I pray all I want to. By now, common sense, I'll tell you, 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 as, you as tall as you're going to get. <laughs> oh, Stay in the will of God. The will of God is revealed in the word of God. 
Your prayers are going to be based on the word of God. Look at Ephesians 5.18 again. Let's look at this. Uh -huh. And be not drunk with wine, now, wearing in excess. Now, now, he didn't say don't get drunk, but he said don't be drunk on wine. But uh -huh. he said get drunk. Now, go ahead. But be filled with the Spirit. But be filled. Notice that. Be filled. Not half full, not 75%, not 99.9. Not .9. The whole song says, Lord, I'm striving, trying to make 100. 99 and a half won't do. Be filled with the Spirit. So if you're going to pray, get full of the Spirit so you can pray in the Spirit. Because, yea, the Spirit faces the deep things of God. You need God's Spirit to know how to talk to God. The carnal mind, with all that goes on in our daily lives, is not ready to talk to God. Right. We went about too much. That's why sometimes we have to be in prayer. I think that's why Jesus used the example, can you watch me one hour? Because generally, if you stay on your knees for about an hour and you stay woke, a whole lot of mess will pass out of your mind. Glory. You went over all the day's problems, all the day's issues, all your concerns and wants, and you'll generally get to a place where your mind becomes pliable that God can speak to your spirit. My Lord. Go ahead. So be filled with the spirit. Go ahead. Let's look at John 16, 23. Uh-huh. And in that day. And in that day. You shall ask me nothing. You shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Verily, I say unto you. Whatsoever ye shall ask the whatever Father. Whatever ask my Father. In my name. In my name. He will give it to you. It is. The power is in the name. Yes. Sometimes we pray a whole prayer and never say Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, Father. Oh, Spirit. Oh, oh. Where is the name? There is power in the name. The name of Jesus makes demons tremble. The name of Jesus backs up sickness. The name of Jesus delivers. The name of Jesus opens doors. The name of Jesus Ooh, makes God. ways. It's not just the name, but it's the authority and the power behind the name. Shut up. Holy. Glory. Ooh. Something about that name yes. calms my fears and soothes my doubts. <laughs> The name of Jesus, every tongue shall bow and every, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. God has given him a name above every name. Yeah. Woo, the name, the name. So when you pray, I'm praying in the name. After you do all your superlatives, all your phrases, all you use your whole vernacular of, of, of extraordinary 16 syllable words. All you get through with all that, remember the name. Oh, glory. For the power is in the name. In the name. Oh, Jesus. Look at 1 John 5 and 14. I got to close and this, this thing up. this is the confidence. And this is the confidence. That we have in him. That we have in him. That if we ask anything. If we ask anything. According to his will. According to his will. He hears us. He hears us. When you've been walking right, if you ask anything Ooh, according to his will, he heareth us. Yeah. Because what you ask will be according to his will. Hallelujah. I, I got to move on. Let's, let's, go, let's go to uh, the uh, persistent prayer. Yes. Let's go to that. Go to, yeah. go to, go to, go to uh, Luke 18. Uh-huh. And he spake a parable. Now, now this is dealing with them. praying, uh, 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 persistent prayer. Go ahead. Not to this end. Uh-huh. That men ought always to pray. He said men ought always pray. Go to, no, to I, want to, I want to go to 18 and 1. That's on page 5. I want to look at this little woman real quick. That's okay. it's, it's page 5. I'm on 5. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. 18 and 1. And he spake a parable. And he spake a parable. Oh, that's, that's it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. You, were, you were right, Evangelist. Go ahead. Men always to pray. Always and pray, pray and not what? Sin. Stop giving up. Uh -huh. Stop quitting. Don't Stop fail. throwing down the towel. Say, I ain't prayed yet. Yes. I know the bills do, but I ain't prayed yet. Mm -hmm. I know the doctor have given me a report, but I ain't prayed yet. Oh, glory. And when you say you ain't prayed yet, what you're really saying, I haven't talked to God. My Lord. I haven't seen what God going to say about the matter. Uh -huh. This that, Bible deals with the square. I don't have time to deal with it all. But there's a little woman here. There was a woman that said Look, drop, drop yeah. down, drop down, uh -huh. drop down to verse 4. Yes, which fit, all right. And he would not for uh -huh. a while. He would not. But afterward, he said to himself. Now watch what he said. No, I fear not God. I don't fear God. I regard man. And I don't regard man. Yet because this But this widow woman troubled, troubled me. me. This widow troubled me. Uh-huh. I will avenge her. This is a tough guy. That's by her he didn't feel God in man, but he said, because this woman keep bothering me. She I'm going to do something uh, about her situation. Yes. Then let's look on. Drop down. Let's see. She and, 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 and look at verse 7. Uh-huh. 
And shall not God. And he shall not God. And avenge his own. His own elect. Uh -huh. Which cry day and night with him. Listen. Though he bear long with them. Keep oh, on Lord. praying. Keep, praying. Keep on praying. God will avenge you. God yeah. will answer. God will show up. If you're in God's will, if you've been walking right, living holy, keep praying. Shunda. If you're praying by the Spirit and in the Spirit, you will get in touch with God. It's only a matter of time for the Bible say, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Yeah. Yes. I will tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Yes, avenge them speedily. I got to close this out. Uh -huh. Look at, look at, look at uh, Matthew 20, 26 and 39. And he went a little further. Jesus, this is Jesus. He went a little further. And fell on his face. Fell on his face. And prayed, saying. Now, here's, the, here's a powerful uh, uh, acknowledgement. We got to get to prayer. Mm -hmm. He said, what did he say, Vandals? Oh, my father. Oh, my father. If it be possible. If it be possible. Let this cup pass from me. Oh, my father. If it be possible, change my job. Never let Oh, my ask. father. If uh -huh. it be possible, change my situation. Yeah. Oh, my God. If it be possible, Lord, give me a new uh, uh, status in life. Oh, my possible. If it be possible, Lord, heal my body. Oh, my God. Lord, if it be possible, touch my child. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, you know, we got a whole oh, lot of if oh. it be possible. Yeah. But Jesus said this. What did he say, man? Nevertheless, nevertheless, not as I will, not my will, but as thou will. But hey. thy will. Sunday See, Sunday. when you pray in the Spirit, when you're led of God, when you're living holy, you come to the point and the uh, uh, of the acknowledgement that it ain't about me anyway. My that Lord. it's not my will, but yeah. it's your will. Because you understand that once He saves you, He saved you to get glory out of you of Him. Because Jesus said, if I be lifted up, yeah. draw all men unto me. Now let me go. On. Let's go to purposeful prayer. I'm closing this out. Uh -huh. Purposeful prayer. I got to close and it out. Jabez called. This is on the, the prayer of Jabez. Oh, yes. Hold on just a minute, man. Uh -huh. Purposeful prayer. The yeah. end of 18, he tells us to pray or to make supplication for all the saints. There's the word supplication again, which means a specific prayer request. And to pray for all the saints means to pray for all Christians. Everywhere. Pray. That's what Paul said. Now, yeah. here's a classic example. When the author of Chronicles dutifully provided us with a list of Judah descendants, he, he, he had a whole list. You go to the book of Chronicles, you see a whole list in 1 Chronicles chapter 4. He said, this one begat that one, and this one begat that one, and this one begat that one. It's all, he just, he just given us a whole list of all these famous people that were begotten by this one, and begotten by that one, and begotten. But then he breaks it. He, yeah. he, he can't help himself. He stops right in the midst of all the names. He comes to Jabez, yes. a man he wants us to notice, a man of true honor. Now, Jabez was, was born by his mother in misery. I think his name means misery because she didn't want him. Mm -hmm. Oh, I hear God talking. Some of us were born in situations that we didn't ask for, conditions we didn't create, environments we can't control, but that don't stop us from getting a prayer through. Oh, glory. It Lord. may be rough, it may be hard, yes. it may be tough, but you can get a prayer through. Hallelujah. Jabez prayed. What did he pray, Evangelist? He called on the Lord of Israel, saying, He oh, called Lord. on the Lord of Israel. Oh, I wish somebody God would call on the God of heaven, say, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy. Oh, that thou would bless me. He said, Oh, that thou would bless me. Uh huh, and enlarge my coast. Enlarge my oh, that, that, He said, Oh, oh that thou would bless me. me See, first you acknowledge him. Yeah. I got to help y'all. You got to acknowledge it. See, one of the worst things we hate is somebody not to acknowledge our name. Glory be so when God. you come to God, you ought to say, Jesus, oh God of Israel, Jesus, Hallelujah. Savior of my soul, hey. deliverer of my life, Jesus, glory, glory, glory. saying, oh, that thou would bless, bless me, me indeed. indeed. In other words, when you get to where you realize who your help come from, yeah. You know you're in a bad situation and you can't do nothing hey. about it. People may not like you. People may mistreat you. But Jesus, yeah. and enlarge God of heaven, all that thou would bless me. Yeah. Go ahead. And enlarge my coast. Enlarge my territory. Uh -huh. and that thou enlarge hand. my coast. Yeah. I've been hindered. I've been boxed in. I've been mistreated. I've oh, been held back. Oh, Stuff Lord. been taken from me. But Lord, enlarge my territory. Oh, glory. And, that, that, that hand and thy hand might, might be, be on me. Lord, put your hand. Oh, good God Ooh. Almighty. Put your hand on me, Jesus. See, because the Bible said, I'll hold you in my hand and nobody can pluck you out. Woo, glory. And that thou wouldest keep me from keep evil. Me. See, I like his attitude. He asked God. He, he recognized that Jesus the God of heaven 
he recognized that ain't, ain't nobody do me like Jesus. And then he said, bless me. And then he said, put your hand on me. Yes. Not to hurt me, not to mistreat me, but keep me from evil. Glory, that it may not grieve me. That it may not grieve me, because evil will make me mess up my blessing. Woo. And God and, granted and him. And that's what the Bible said, God granted him. Granted him. Which his request. he requested. When you ask God and you're in his will and you're walking upright and you're full of the Holy Ghost with the evidence speaking in tongue, you've been to the water, you've been baptized in Jesus' name, you're going through a rough world. But when you call on Jesus and you ask him to bless you indeed and put his hand on you to keep you from evil. And the Lord will expand your territory oh, Lord. and grant it his request. Glory. Praise God. Glory. Don't stop praying. Keep on praying. Glory. Call on God. Don't let the Glory. devil mess with you. Glory. Glory. Don't let the tell you, tell you that God won't show up. Baby, God ain't but one prayer away. I'm talking to somebody out there right now. God ain't but one prayer away. One more thank you, Jesus. One more help me, Lord. One more I need you right now. One more Jesus. God ain't but one prayer away. Call him and he'll answer. Seek him and you'll find him. Prayer is a powerful weapon. When the sword, when the shield, when the helmet, when the belt, when the shoes, when the breastplate is working right, it's because somebody prayed. Prayer will get you through. Prayer will make you stand up and face the devil. Prayer will make you fight. Prayer will make you go on. Prayer will help you hold on. Just get in your fighting position. Just drop to your knees and say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Prayer and supplication. Line up with God's will. And he will answer. Jabez. One born in a right situation. One born with a mama that warned him. Mistreated. But in the midst of all those names, the writer couldn't help himself. He said, I got to tell you about somebody. <laughs> he ain't even supposed to be in this list. But because he prayed, my God. I'm here to tell you some of y'all ought to be dead and in your grave, but you prayed. Pray for that son. Pray for that daughter. Pray for that spouse. Pray for your city. Pray for your neighborhood. Pray for your country. Pray. Prayer change things. Oh, yes, it will. I've seen it work. So we ask you, this has been a blessing to you. Call us here at the Greater Bethlehem Temple Church. Our prayer counsel online to help you we can get a prayer through Woo. we can get a prayer through we've been through what you're going through we know what prayer will do hey we know what prayer will do just have a little talk with Jesus tell him all about your trouble <laughs> in his prayer. he'll answer by and by prayer will turn him hey hey hey, hey. call on Jesus God bless you we hope you can submit can, can support this great ministry with your resources. You can reach us on one of our giving platforms. Give generously. Your money is used to keep this church going. This is a spiritual hospital to help men, women, boys, and girls that are suffering with sin. We're praying that God would break down the devil's hold on them, the chains of darkness and wickedness. Set them free. Set the captive free. Deliver boys and girls from drugs and wicked lifestyle. Send men back home to their wives. Help women be the men, women God wants them to be. We're praying that God would, would, would open the door in your house. That situation, that problem that, that's just wrecking your house, tearing up your house. I'm praying in the name of Jesus that he send deliverance. Praying for those that are sick. The Bible said pray for the sick. In fact, the prayer of the righteous. It was Isaiah, I mean Elijah who prayed and they shut the heavens up for three and a half years. He prayed again and it opened up and the rain come. You can pray and to God will shut something up. And you can pray again and God will open it back up. Woo! There is power in this secret weapon of prayer. That's why the devil don't like for us to pray. Get in our head and give us a headache. Get, make us sleepy. 
Because he knows once you start praying and talking to God and getting in God's will, you're going to rise with power to live holy. And that he hates more than anything else, holiness. So please send us a generous donation. We are a tithing church. We believe a dime out of every dollar belongs to God Almighty. We trust God takes that dime and invests it and opens up wonders of heaven that we don't have room enough to receive. So help us as we fight the good fight, looking for the coming of Jesus. For there is a God in Bethlehem, and Jesus is his name. May God bless you. May God keep you. Until next time, we love you. And we're looking again to be in touch with you on another virtual telecast as soon as God will permit the opportunity. We we'll hope in the meantime you send your names in to our prayer list. And we pray for everyone, whether you're a member of this church or not, we pray. Doesn't matter, male or female, black or white, we pray. Red, brown, it doesn't matter, we pray. Children and adults, we pray. You don't know what God is going to do because somebody's praying for you. We love you. Remember, secret weapon of prayer glory, glory. is powerful. Till next time, God keep you. In Jesus' name, amen. And we thank you for joining us for the live streaming, The E-Church Experience. And we would like to say happy birthday to our assistant pastor, Betty Gibson. We are wishing her a very happy birthday. It is coming up on October the 31st. Happy birthday, Pastor Gibson. We love you. And don't forget, friends, if you have not already voted, Please do so, and remember that your vote counts. Remember your vote, your voice, 2020. And don't forget our adjusted service schedule in response to COVID-19. Telechurch, 917-900-1022. The access code for 781-4781 pound. Sunday, Christian education at 9 o'clock a.m. via Telechurch. Sunday morning glory prayer at 9.45 a.m. via Telechurch. Sunday morning worship bread house broadcast at 11 o'clock a.m. via Telechurch and eChurch. Monday pastoral prayer at 6 o'clock p.m. via Telechurch. Tuesday Bible class at 7 o'clock p.m. via Telechurch and eChurch. And Wednesday midweek inspiration at 5 o'clock p.m. via Telechurch. And we thank you again for watching tonight's live broadcast, a production of the GBTAC Media Ministry. We thank you.